Again, for us, seamlessness is very important. We needed to be able to explore this Caribbean world without having too much interruption in the action. So being able to just let go of the wheel anywhere we want, jump into the water, and swim over to that location. This is very important for the mood and the immersiveness of this Caribbean open world. Forget everything you know about the traditional pirate fantasy. Skull and bones. No! But that's what I like. No! <laughs> like, already you're starting on the wrong foot. Like, what? Men from all over the world sail the treacherous trade routes of the Indian Ocean. The riches in their holds fuel their dreams of power and fortune, while whetting the appetites of those they fear most. Pirates. I think it's often understated about the hype that Skull and Bones brought in when it was first announced. We can look into the future and look where we are with the title at this point in time and say that it was never going to be what was hyped up. But back in the day, when we first got this E3 2017 trailer, this shook ground. I had never seen anything like this, and it harked back to the Assassin's Creed Black Flags. What was once a title that was a spin-off for that game was now becoming a standalone behemoth. And the fan base was building. The reaction was incredibly positive. Tens of thousands of likes, millions of views across the board. Comments with nothing but positivity for Skull and Bones. So what happened? How do we go to one of the most hyped AAA titles of the decade to a delayed disaster? The pitch that Ubisoft bought to the world. The golden age of piracy, 1721. Renegade captains command the most powerful weapons on earth, warships. You are a pirate who has refused the king's pardon and sailed from the Caribbean to the Indian Ocean, an untamed frontier full of lavish riches. However, these waters are also a battleground where far-reaching colonial empires, powerful trading corporations, and ruthless pirate gangs clash. In order to survive, you'll have to build a lethal fleet, prey upon lucrative trade routes, and ally with other pirates in your endless struggle for supremacy. From full pirate ship customization, a complete simulation of naval combat, from using cannons to chain shot to barrels in the water, loot to upgrade and to progress through the game, playing solo or co-op, using the hunting grounds, whether it's against other players or AI. And in June 2017, they announced it would be released in the fall of the next year. And in that, they at least got something right. In the next year, it definitely fell. Yet with cinematic trailers being all the rage, people have learned from Watch Dogs that Ubisoft specifically do not exactly pay up to what their CGI budget can offer, so it was gameplay that we wanted. And yet in the same E3, we did actually get some of that. The Priscilla's Shallows of Madagascar. Located on the cusp of a bustling trade route, it is the perfect place for an ambush. Searching for more targets on the horizon, our sloop of war spots a rival pirate ship further inland. Yet whilst the gameplay looked impressive and graphically was exactly what people wanted, it was showing off a multiplayer game mode that I don't think people had expected. You see, this actually originally started as a spin-off for Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, one of the most popular titles in that franchise. They saw how popular the pirates were and thought, we should make a standalone game from this. So an expansion was started that solely focused on that ship combat. 
yet as time went on, Ubisoft realised that they could actually make a standalone game from this. Thus, Skull and Bones was born. So people thought it would be a standalone version, almost like another Assassin's Creed Black Flag just refined for the modern day. Yet this gameplay showed they were heading in towards the arcadey multiplayer battles. Multiple teams of ships hunting down loot to try and take each other out in ambushes in this game mode called The Hunt, working together using the wind and of course your cannons that you've upgraded on your battleships in order to become victorious. Yet people were starting to get skeptical. Was this just an arcadey ship game that looked like Assassin's Creed Black Flag, but wasn't really going to be that open world that I think people really wanted? Showing off the assumed weaponry like cannons and heavy shot, using chain shots to take out sails, but also things like mortars, with different ships that have different roles, whether it's the sloop firing from afar, whether it's the up-close ramming ships, or the hard-hitting and heavily armoured warships that can fire their broadsides in a plethora of manner towards any enemy that come too close. There also looked to be some additional things in the distance that I think might have hyped some people up, but for me started to worry me. One of them being a flamethrower ship. Ubisoft definitely didn't seem like they were heading towards this realistic ship warfare. This game in a historical genre, which at least for me at the time sent up a few more red flags than I perhaps would have wanted. But hey, who doesn't want to fire fireworks onto another ship? I mean, seriously, guys, what, what is this? But out of this whole gameplay section that we were shown at E3, the biggest part for me was the boarding. This was a huge part of Assassin's Creed Black Flag and what made it brilliant. Being able to jump off your ship anywhere, really influencing that open world feeling and immersing you within this pirate Caribbean style. So when you went up to other ships that were destroyed and injured, you could pull up alongside them, grapple them towards you, and jump across, then having some hand-to-hand -hand combat or, you know, chucking some lead into their skulls. That was always an option. Then you would have the decision whether you want to execute loot or repair your ship, so on and so forth. And that was what we thought we were going to get within Skull and Bones. But Ubisoft had a different idea. They wanted to add boarding because they knew that that was such a popular feature. Yet the first sight of boarding that we saw within E3 was a cutscene. If a ship was down to a low enough health, you would pull up alongside it and watch as a cinematic played in a live multiplayer game. There was no crew to crew combat. There was no reason to upgrade your crew, maybe to get them better and skilled at fighting close quarters if it meant that they weren't quite as good on their cannons. This meant that you could specialize your ships even further to make it a boarding party rather than a long ranged frigate. But no, it was all cutscenes. It was all done without the player's control whatsoever. This, this was Ubisoft's approach to a hands-on game. Once again, another strike on my list. Yet with beautiful graphics and sea shanties to fit, this was still the team that were behind Black Flag. So there was still hope. It wasn't awful. I mean, it was our first actual look at the gameplay at E3. Nothing else had been said or shown yet, so this could just be one section of the title. People were still excited. This open world aspect could still be coming here. It was the pre-alpha demo that was shown at E3 2018 that supposedly got quite a lot of love from its players. It was just the ship combat and people thought that this arcade mode was a lot of fun, but was hoping for something a little bit different further down the line, at least a little bit more gameplay. Yet in September 2020, Ubisoft came out with their own personal post. After the first delays, people were wondering what was going on. They said, we know you've been waiting for news, so I'm thrilled to confirm this. Production on Skull and Bones has been in full swing with a new version. What does that even mean? They're now heading in a different direction? Does this mean that we are actually going to get the game that we wanted? That they saw the criticisms from the generic arcade modes because a lot of the trailers were not looking all that great in terms of reception, and they actually decided to go the way that people wanted? They say, The answer is we simply needed more time. We dreamt of something bigger for Skull and Bones, and these ambitions naturally came with bigger challenges. These difficulties resulted in necessary delays. So they were working on something bigger. There was going to be a lot more. Then they went silent. Yes, from the 10th of September 2020 to March 2022, there was nothing. Ubisoft didn't say a word about that pirate ship title. Where had it gone? Then they released an insider program, a unique opportunity for selected few to test early versions. Okay, so we're actually going to get some gameplay. Then with a few teasers, we finally got the full gameplay reveal. And boy, were we in for a treat with 13,000 dislikes. Jesus Christ, we're back here again. 
You can always tell it's going to be a great idea when they've turned off the comments of their own reveal gameplay. At Ubisoft Forward July 2022 is when we got our first bit of this new and improved version. You know, what was supposed to be completely different to what they shown off earlier. It was the same game. What had they even been working on for the last five years? See, it's like, oh, oh, look at it. I can walk around. I can walk around. Send equipment. Right. Provision for your expeditions at sea. Pick up contracts and socialize with other players. That's it. Any so you're just going to. That, I mean, this is the walking around you'll do only in the success. hub worlds. Only in Get the trading and posts. There, there's no upgrade five you. years later. This is looking well exactly the same as Assassin's Creed that we had, I don't know, ten years ago. <laughs> And look, this is harvesting resources. Oh, look, yeah, what is that? That's bad. That looks. It kind of looks like a mobile game in that yes. way. Like it's yes, yes. got mobile game vibes. When you get those mobile, I mean, this also very much looks like a mobile game. So this is like the crafting, but so it just, looks so much. It's just a cutscene. Yeah. So I doubt you're actually going to be able to do any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's just like you click the upgrade button and then you get a cutscene and you don't do anything else. Mm, look at that cargo ship. Yeah, that looks nice. Look at that shark. That, that, that looks like how they did that. Back in the day. <laughs> this is where it gets even better. I think we're about to see some of the. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at that. That's look at the amazing. spikes. Spi oh, oh, look at that. All oh, the firepower. Ow. Maybe it was that. Yeah. Yes. But my guess is that that's going to be. I mean, torpedoes. Hell yeah. Excellent. They she would. even says, actually, I think we missed it, but she even says that you can attach rocket launchers yes. to your ship. They did have rocket launchers back in the. 1400. Holy shit, I would have been so excited to see this in 2017, 2018. 2016. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like if, if like this was like a release thing from a couple of years ago. Holy sure, shit, look at that, Dan. I, I have the thing installed where you can see 27,000 to 12. Yeah. Wowie. Oh, God, watching back all these reactions and the actual gameplay from the time is worse than I remember. This video now has 81,000 dislikes on Ubisoft's YouTube channel. Can you imagine the reaction? I mean, this video in the description still has that it's launching on November 8th for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Stadia, Luna, Epic Games Store, and Ubisoft Connect. As far as I'm aware, Stadia doesn't even exist anymore, and that November 8th release date was almost a year ago now. Imagine how immersion breaking it's going to be when you're sailing your pirate galleon and come across a player with a splinter cell collab ship. <laughs> <coughs> keep them coming, keep them coming. Again, Ubisoft has done exactly what everyone said they didn't want in a pirate game. Amazing how committed they are. <laughs> Everybody wanted a game to play as a pirate, raiding and pillaging and sailing the high seas. Ubisoft cut out the middleman and are delivering a game where you play as the ship. <laughs> And I think the funniest thing about all this is that there was so much potential within Ubisoft's title. You see, they had an amazing IP and they had an incredible idea that had never been done to this sort of success before. And somehow they fucked it. Ubisoft, of course they did. I mean, could you even... I mean, look at this fort attack. It is the most weird arcadey stuff ever, with fireworks in the sky, with weird loot boxes that you can pick up, and certain pinpointed areas highlighted in red that you could attack with your ship, and then if you clicked a button, your animated pirates, in a cutscene, I might add, would jump off and raid said fort. That would be the extent of the gameplay. Sure, it's a multiplayer pirate open world game, but most of it is done within cutscenes, and the bits that aren't, well, that's where you'll find rockets and torpedoes using ballistas, launchers, catapults, and flamethrowers within a game set in the Indian Ocean during the 1700s. Do Ubisoft understand why people were annoyed at this? Can they even fathom why the community would be so upset? With the title that they were promised and have been waiting over five years for, they came back saying they were working on something bigger, delayed three or four times, and they return with the same title we saw back in the day, but worse. With more weird arcadey features, upgrading ships, and definitely not that open world game that was promised, where you could actually walk around on land. No, it's just a hub world. Jesus Christ, lads. Well, at least we've got a moat so we can dance with people if we want to. Have you ever heard of the term clutching defeat from the jaws of victory? I think that sums up what Ubisoft did here. Incredibly. This gameplay overview trailer was so badly received that Ubisoft once again took another step back. Yeah, I'm not joking. They, they delayed the game again. 
until now, where Ubisoft, this Gamescom, as I'm making this video, have let players get their hands on a closed beta. Oh my god. This is gonna be incredible. Maybe they fixed it. So it is confirmed that during the 1700s, pirates actually went to the future and found the fully automatic machine gun. They used this on their ships to take out their enemies with dastardly range and firepower, and they demolished them into Davy Jones' locker. Seriously, what was the idea behind this? I understand that we're in 2023, and for some reason companies think that you need to be able to shoot everything fully automatic, otherwise players get bored, but you know the best part of pirate games is the tension when you're building up between firing your cannons and reloading, the precious seconds that it takes to get that reload in to hope that you've turned your gun at the right position to not have a swivel cannon, but have to move your entire ship round hoping to get the angle perfect before the enemy rams you or gets themselves into a better position or what about when the enemy is behind you and you can't quite hit them with your cannons because you've only got broadsides that builds up so much tension and immerses you within this new form of combat that is so underrepresented within modern day gaming but no they had to make it like world of warships what do you mean i mean even world of warships sorry that was really unfair on world of warships is more realistic than this and that is a world war ii game because you've got artillery, you've got MGs, you've even got planes that you can call in. I will be surprised if they don't have some sort of airstrike coming down from goddamn hot air balloons in Skull and Bones. Ubisoft, what are you thinking? But look, anger aside, I actually didn't get to play the closed beta because they were very sad to me. However, some other YouTubers like Fozzy Bond here and JV, who great YouTubers that I have watched in the past, did actually get to play the closed beta. JV, as far as I'm aware, his video on Skull and Bones and the closed beta is actually sponsored. And I will never, never shun anybody for taking a sponsored video. Because if you're in the position where a company like Ubisoft say, can you make a video on our game and I'll pay you thousands, if not tens of thousands of pounds, you would take it. So there's no point in criticizing it, especially for people that do this full time but aren't necessary millionaires. It would be stupid to say no. So I will never criticize someone like JV for doing a sponsored video on a game that he has openly criticized. And in fact, I think his video is fantastically done. He managed to be honest and fair. And whilst you can tell he's trying to be kind of nice and give the benefit of the doubt to the people paying him money, I think he managed to convey in a brilliant way how disappointed he is with the title. So I'll let him explain some of exactly what Skull and Bones is about. Graphically, it's very pleasing to look at. I miss cake. In the very beginning, you have this epic fight against the British in a massive ship. And honestly, this moment, I was like, oh my God. And unfortunately, it never really got back to that much of a high. On a reel for one sec, what actually is this? This is their little arcade mini game to collect resources within the title. What? Who thought this would be a good idea? Sorry. Am I a sentient pirate ship? Going back to the graphics, I think it was a given that this was probably going to be a nice looking game because Ubisoft do graphically know what they're doing, and JV does mention this. But apart from the water and the lighting, which granted looks stunning, I would actually argue that in some place it is horrific. I mean, he does mention about the facial animations, that's already in the video, but if you look closely, even at this big battle that JV's talking about at the start, that he says is very impressive, it looks like when there's explosions in the air as cannonballs go off or whatever these flat cannon looking things are, it looks like PNGs as little explosion images coming up. And then if you look at the destruction of the ships themselves as the sail and bits of wood get beaten away, they just disappear. There's no dynamic falling off of pieces, it's just an update in the model that, yeah, now there's holes in the sail. As the ships explode, these explosions look terrible. I would argue to say that the graphics in this are worse than something like a black flag from 10 years ago. And here's the big kicker that I haven't really addressed throughout this whole video, because the initial comparison is to say, oh, but I thought we were getting black flag. And I think when it was first announced, people did want that, a standalone kind of black flag type game with this whole open world aspect. And I have harked back to that multiple times in this video. It is clear that that is not what they're going for. The reasons, who knows? This was initially going to be an expansion and what that expansion was going to be, we will never find out. However, 
they have clearly made the conscious decision to make this a separate thing to the Assassin's Creed franchise, to not have any sort of open world, and, and the only walking on land is through hub stuff. The story is told through some characters, but not really that fleshed out from early reports. Most of walking around in ports is picking up missions from NPCs. So yeah, is it unfair to compare it to Black Flag? Probably. That doesn't change the fact that what they have delivered still seems to be way below any expectations for a quality title that has been delayed over and over again, promises have been made and then taken away, and as my clip at the start of this video said, when they announced that you need to forget everything you know about pirate titles, Angry Joe was right. That's a disaster in itself because people love pirate titles, and you're making something that isn't that. You're making an arcade shooter with machine guns, flamethrowers, every weapon that you can think of under the fantastical sun, and putting a pirate skin on it to try and bring in that historical audience that you know will never be interested in this type of thing. Using the name of Black Flag and Assassin's Creed to give a game that is nothing like that title the advertisement that it doesn't deserve. You see, whilst people are perhaps unfairly comparing this to Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, that is all the fault of Ubisoft. Because what Ubisoft have done has told us that Helen of Troy has a cousin. Up through the reveal, they've shown the cousin behind her a veiled look of Helen of Troy through beautiful trailers and CGI graphics. And before release, they did say, this is Helen of Troy's cousin, don't you worry, and comes out and it's some hunched backed lad that can't stop spitting over himself. It's still Helen of Troy's cousin, but don't expect it to be anything like Helen of Troy. I don't even know if that analogy makes sense. I just wanted to use pictures of Helen of Troy. So far, the reports, even from people that Ubisoft are paying, have been mostly negative. I've seen so many other people that haven't been paid by Ubisoft that have got into the Insider program that have also given negative reviews. But despite all of this, I'm not even angry. I'm just disappointed. Because I am a channel that loves historical games. And I loved Black Flag. And in fact, upon every single bit of Ubisoft's release about Skull and Bones, I was following, not only through videos, but even behind the scenes, I have notifications on for the Skull and Bones Twitter, and I've been excited to see more and more information about this game. But every step along the way, they seem to just keep disappointing. And that's all it is, because I would have loved this to be a brilliant pirate title, because I love those kind of games. But what they have displayed is a lack of direction, maybe a lack of funding and a lack of planning. A complete mismatch with promotion and the reality of the game that they were building. And of course, well, one of the most botched release timelines I have ever seen. Because whether or not this is going to be a failure is still to be seen. However, there is one thing that it does share in common with its Assassin's Creed brother. It is definitely a black flag.